Hey viewers, my name is Kara. I'm your host for Tuesdays on the Pagan Perspective, and this week we have two questions to answer. We're talking about the Church of the Jedi Order, or the Temple of the Jedi Order, and whether there's anything we would change about our paths. The first question is, have we ever heard of the Church of the Jedi Order or the Temple of the Jedi Order, and do we think this falls under the broad umbrella of paganism? So I had heard of the Church of the Jedi Order before, but I hadn't really read up much on it, so I did a quick little research and found some great links, which will be in the description. The website to the Temple of the Jedi Order, as well as another website about something called the Jedi Church, which is evidently very different. A link to an article and a video from Huffington Post Live interviewing some of the people involved in the Jedi Churches. And also the Wikipedia article on Jediism. So from what I've learned, the Temple of the Jedi Order, or Jediism, is a non-theistic religion that is based on the principles followed by the Jedi in Star Wars, which in turn was based a lot on Eastern philosophy. So if anything, I would consider them a new religious movement based in Eastern philosophy. And Eastern philosophies are in that gray area where if you go by the definition that paganism is any religion that is non-Abrahamic, then Eastern philosophies like Buddhism and all of those sorts of things would be included in the pagan umbrella. However, at the same time, there are a lot of Eastern philosophies that as such do not define themselves as religions and in fact are atheistic or non-religious and so do not self-identify as part of the pagan umbrella. So you would have to ask the Jedi whether they consider themselves pagan, but they do use Christian-based titles for their offices and ranks and things like that, which the website, Temple of the Jedi Order, Org, explains is because that's the system that is most familiar to their followers and so it's easier for everyone to sort of identify with okay what are the different ranks and what are the offices what is the stature that they hold even though their code is based on the Jedi principles which is based in more in Zen Buddhism and Taoism they've gone with a sort of Christian based hierarchy at least as far as the labels go so you'd have to ask them and Temple of the Jedi Order does have a very detailed website which I encourage you to check out the link is below I did come across another website that is Jedi Church which has totally different symbolism and seems to be a lot more groups around the country, small groups and people trying to start their own churches as part of this movement, and they seem to be on a very different scale as far as what they're going for, whereas Temple of the Jedi Order makes it very clear that they're not a role-playing group, they are a religion that is based on it but is not you know, in worship of Star Wars or George Lucas or anything like that. The Jedi Church things that I s saw seem to be more interested in fandom type groups getting together and being Jedis. Now, they do still have a religious element to it, but it seems to be very different than the level that the Temple of the Jedi Order is talking about. And the Jedi Church website is not well written at all, and seems to focus more on the Jedi census thing, which the Wikipedia article will tell you more about that. But the thing that annoyed me about that site is that while they're urging people to write Jedi on their census as their religion, they also sort of point out their right to be considered in the census by saying that, well, Satanism and Wicca, which is spelled incorrectly on the website, and yoga are included as valid faiths. So why shouldn't they be too? I don't know about yoga being on there, since it's a practice associated with philosophy and works in conjunction with various religious beliefs, but is not a religion in itself, as far as I know. But Satanism and Wicca are established religions based on older beliefs, which were established just a little bit longer ago. So I don't exactly think well, Satanists and Wiccans get to be on it is really the right argument to be making. But sure, people who follow Jediism as a religion should put Jedi as their religion on a census. People who don't shouldn't. You don't want skewed numbers, you want true numbers, you want reliable statistics, and you, you want to know who's actually following the faith. You want a good representation. You don't want people just saying it to say it. And that's true of any religion. The only other thing that bugged me as I was doing research on, from all these different links, which really there's only like four or five that I looked at, but there are a lot more pages about it if you want to read more about it, go for it. There's a lot on there. So the only other thing I came across that bugged me is on the wiki page, the Wikipedia page, it mentions a few stories of people having gotten thrown out of different businesses because they identify as a Jedi and they refused 
to remove their hood in a public establishment of one type or another, saying that because they're a Jedi, it's for a religious purpose and they would not remove their hood. And that kind of thing I think is fine if it's a sincerely held religious belief, such as you can't wear a head covering when you get a driver's license photo taken in the United States unless it is specifically part of your religion, and it actually specifies on the sign when you go, it says uh, that the exception is recognized religious belief. But anyway, there's one mention that talks about uh, the owner of the supermarket defending why he asked someone to leave who didn't remove his hood by saying, and I quote, He hasn't been banned. Jedis are very welcome to shop in our stores, although we would ask them to remove their hoods. Obi-Wan, Kenobi, Yoda, and Luke Skywalker all appeared hoodless without ever going over to the dark side, and we are only aware of the Emperor as one who never removed his hood. End quote. Which I thought was a pretty good point. And another story quotes a man who was thrown out, again, for refusing to move his hood, and he is quoted as saying, The main reason is I want to wear my hood up, and I have got a religion which allows me to do that. End quote. And that guy received an apology from the place that threw him out. In my opinion, when you use your religion just to justify something that you want to do, that bothers me. That doesn't sound like a sincerely held belief at that point. That sounds like something you want and use your religion to get. So I think that stories like that can be detrimental to this movement if they want to be seen on a more formal level and taken seriously. Things like that get them into the media and make people know about them, and that's pretty much the only good thing about it. Otherwise, I can't really see any other good coming from that kind of thing. And I actually didn't come across anything about wearing hoods on the websites, so I might have to go back and look for that specifically. But anyway, check out those links for yourself. There's some really good stuff there. And then before I go, there is a second question to this topic. The second one is... Oh, I have to scroll back up. If you could go back to the day or event that started you on the path that you're on now, what, if any, would you change or do differently? Would you come out of the broom closet to a friend or family member sooner? Would you choose to stay in the broom closet with certain people whom you told? Just some examples to get you thinking. I wouldn't do anything differently. I don't think I've really done anything that I consider wrong or inconvenient or anything that I regret that I would feel the need to change in any way. And I believe to an extent that things happen when and how they should. For example, I've told numerous stories about how I wouldn't read a book even though I knew I should, quote unquote. And it just never seemed like the right time, and then one day it was the right time, and then I did it. I think that things have happened in my path when they should, and I don't think changing when I told people when I didn't tell people, when I learned a certain thing, when I read a certain thing, I don't think changing that would benefit me in any large capacity. I really don't feel that there's anything that I need to alter of that nature. Besides, going back to the day that it happened, I don't think would really change anything because it was a very gradual process. So even if I could pinpoint the day or the event that started it all, which I really don't think I could because it was, it was so much over time, I don't think that that day changing would be the huge thing that changes everything, you know? Because probably that first day, it was nothing more than a thought. And yeah, I suppose the only way it can change is if I didn't have that thought, or didn't make that connection, and then I might not have started studying when I did. But again, I think that this was always in there, and there's been so many other things that happened, and it was a gradual process. I think I would have still come to it, even if that first day, whenever that was, if it even exists, changed. But as far as looking back on the whole course of my path, I wouldn't change anything. Thank you so much for watching. Next week is subs week, and then we have our holiday break for the end of the calendar year. And we'll come back in the new year. There was a video posted a while ago explaining how you can audition if you wanted to audition to be a new substitute member, and those new members will start in the new year and will be voting over the holiday break. I'll put a link to that in the description as well if you hadn't seen that yet. So the next time I see you, it'll be calendar year 2015. Thank you so much for watching, and until then, don't forget to be awesome, blessed be, and goodbye.